did the research community expect this amount of crazy to come out of the closet? Which part of the research community? Um, so there are people, I, I have some friends at Rand who work on this specifically. There are a bunch of people. Um, I, my supervisor for my postdoc works on this a bunch on like, what is it that happens with misinformation and, uh, you know, trolls online and how it is that this spread. And yeah, the, um, the misinformation folks and the kind of people who research anti-vax they were like, oh, this is going to be a nightmare. Like, we know that this is going to be a mess. Um, there's no chance that people don't start saying crazy things. And we know that Russian trolls are going to be um, amplifying this because they amplify everything that seems a little bit crazy or divisive. Um, and, like, we know, we know lots of things. It's going to end up, like, being stupid and crazy. Um, the U.S. political situation right now makes that much worse than it otherwise would be. Um, you, I, you don't see this amount of, of crazy coming from other countries, though. You see it primarily, or maybe it's West. just maybe maybe I'm biased because you know I, I speak no. two two and a bit languages. But do you see this happening in Europe? Do you see this happening in in I don't know South Asia? The type of conspiracies that you see are different. Um, and and by the way, there there's there are huge problems with misinformation spreading over WhatsApp in India. Yeah. It's just a different channel, and you don't hear okay, about it. So the same it is way. Ha- it is well, happening in other so, places. So the the places the the issues that you have are different. Um, there, the UK had a couple of people, um, attacked when they were setting up the, um, the new wireless networks, um, because like those spread COVID, which is, I hear they also make you insane. Yeah. All sorts of things. Um, there's, so uh, yeah, there, there are lots of crazy conspiracies. The, the different types that you hear differ in different places, um, you know, you know what the conspiracies are in Russia and China that this is a U.S. plot, because of course that the disease itself is a U.S. plot, yeah. or that it doesn't even exist. Uh, no, that it's a U.S. plot. I mean, Russia um, has, I think, the same instinctive reaction to COVID as they do to homosexuality, which is oh, but this doesn't exist here, right? Um, which is you know, uh, great. Uh, autocracies tend to do this. I, yeah. Um, I, so how do you create... The, okay, so we live in a global world. The virus used our modern networks to spread. We now have to contend with this internationally. How's the cooperation been so far? How much does the social media atmosphere and all of the uh, conspiracy theories, does that seep into policy making? You know, there there clearly are effects to the to the culture and, and how depends, we handle this. Yeah, it depends a lot on where you're talking about. So I, I when I said the U.S. is in a particularly bad situation, I've I've talked about this. Um, I was asked a year and a half, two years ago, like, so what do you think um, would happen? Like, would we would we manage to contain a pandemic if it happened now? And my answer was almost certainly yes. I mean, like. Everybody has plans for dealing with this. I mean, okay, maybe the current administration in the U.S. would have a lot more problems than in general. But, like, other than that, like, as long as it doesn't happen under the Trump administration, then we would have been fine. And, like, I think back to saying this a lot now um, for obvious reasons. The U.S. is usually a global leader in helping deal with these things, and they drop the ball all sorts of different – like not just in terms of their domestic response. But if the U.S. hadn't been dealing with domestic response, they would have been helping internationally. Um, Sure. Can I I pause just just for a second? And I want you to continue your point, but we have a a certain amount of people that are listening to this are going to, because of the nature of the polarized world that we live in, they're going to hear you say – the Trump administration dropped the ball and they're going to go to this crazy knee jerk reaction of like pro Trump, anti Trump. We have to discount whatever this guy's saying now because he's clearly right. against Trump. Like what are the tangible ways that people that are in this room might feel are obvious, but w- in which ways did the administration drop the ball? So actually one of the, one of the interesting stories that came out recently was um, Jared Kushner was told to like go off and come up with a, with a um, strategy for, um, doing testing and like dealing with this. And he went off and he did this and a bunch of global health people were like, he went off and did this without the global health people. And like, he talked to like the billionaires instead of talking to the experts. And he went off and he did this and like uh, super irresponsible. And he went off and he put together a plan to do massive scale testing 
in the U.S. almost immediately in like mid-March, early April. And like they had a plan. Um, and like that would have been amazing. And, and there are a bunch of people now. So you're saying he actually this. did a good job. Oh, he did an amazing job. And then the plan was dropped. Because, oh, because honestly, um, the Trump administration has a lot of trouble executing on things because and and look you know the the speculation you know the deep state opposes trump is kind of crazy but also completely correct in that most of the people in government think think that he does a bad job with things and um so they kind of oppose the things that he wants to do and yeah. you know, that that's that's true i think well the administration also didn't fill a lot of yeah, kind so there's a lot high, of senior high level roles. bureaucratic posts. They've been fighting right? with Congress constantly. Even even the Republicans in Congress, like they, uh, the Trump administration did not get along with their allies um, forever. Like there's a lot of things that um, political outsiders can do. A lot of things that political insiders can't, and that's sometimes really valuable. Um, but. If you're in Washington, you have to play the game to some extent. Yeah, you have to know how the system and works. If you, and if you don't, like, you can you can fight the system, but you can't ignore it. Right. Um, and I feel like there was too much there. Um, look, the there were a lot of things the Trump administration has gotten right. Um, I think more um, places that people weren't paying attention to. There are some things that they did that were fantastic. Um, Such as? Oh, man, I was so happy with... Um, their push initially to um, have the FDA regulate less harshly. Um, the FDA is, I was talking before about how um, nobody gets blamed for not doing something. Um, right. the, F, the FDA can't approve medication if there's like a one in a thousand chance that it might kill a half a percent of the people who take it. Um, which seems like a good thing because you don't want to approve a medication that kills half a percent of um, people who take it. But that means that all of these medications that could be super effective and yeah, save lots you, of you lives could be saving don't get of right. Don't get approved, um, and that's a problem that we're having right now with COVID stuff. That like people are still more hesitant than they should be about a lot of things. I, I talked about that earlier. Um, and the Trump administration pushed really early on, and it was a Republican talking point forever, and it should have been pushed more um, to like fix this. Um, and having a head of the FDA who was pushing for this was really super helpful. Um, and then the government dysfunction and the fact that the Trump administration switched who was in charge of things a couple of times. They've, they've had, since they appointed somebody who like I was really happy with, they switched the head of the FDA twice and it's been a mess. And so there were things that they tried to do that were great. And the fact that they've been kind of fumbling and throwing you know, different people in and, and switching things around and having fights within the administration has been super unhelpful for them. So you're saying it's not even like this is not a left-right thing, people. This is not a pro-Trump, anti-Trump thing. This is, you know, good governance, good management versus dropping the ball. Like this is not a... Right? Yeah. 